Hello everybody, it's Klaas Hata all the way from South Africa and you're watching Trucker George Vlogs on YouTube. Enjoy. Good Monday morning everybody, or good morning whenever you're watching this. We're here in Rapid City, South Dakota. There was no video from yesterday, it was Sunday yesterday for me so I didn't film nothing, didn't edit nothing, just drove about 500 miles, ended up here at this Flying J. Our load is still all here, still all intact. I'd be very careful not to bend this stuff so I mean I got all the straps going over the pieces of wood. I got very specific instructions for that. There. This isn't a problem. It's barely even touching. It's not going to do anything to it there. And all of that. Very, very steel. Or uh, tin, I guess it would be. I don't like the aluminum. Very thin pieces, eh? Bringing them on up to Red Deer, Alberta. We've still got two days to get there. Today and tomorrow. We unload Wednesday morning. So it's been really nice. I've been able to take my time, not in a rush. I've been driving about 500 miles a day, trying to keep my, my hours on duty close to around eight, because then I don't have to reset, I can just keep recapping. Uh, because then I don't go over my 70 hours in eight days in the US, or 70 hours in seven days in Canada. It's uh, keeping me under there a little bit so I don't have to stop for a whole day. Uh, from Red Deer, we got a reload. Uh, where is it coming out of? It's coming out of Alberta somewhere, I think. It's a load of lumber going to Wisconsin. Uh, Sundra, Alberta. No tarp required. I pick that up as soon as I'm empty on Wednesday. It says before 2 o'clock. That shouldn't be a problem. And it's going to Hortonville, Wisconsin. And I got to deliver that on the 10th, which is next Tuesday. Or I could probably get away with bringing it there on the Monday, but we'll see. I have a barbecue at our house this weekend that I don't want to miss, so I might just deliver that on the 10th, on Tuesday. If I get a reload out of there, I could be back by the end of the week, because i got to be back for the next weekend, because that's our anniversary weekend. Two years married. It's an important one. Well, they're all important ones. Don't want to miss that. So I'm just going to... I'm really far away. I'm way in the back of the parking lot here. I'm just gonna drag my butt a little bit closer to the building and go inside and get a coffee, a little something to eat. I'm trying to eat as many whole fruits as possible. It's a little difficult when you're an international driver though because you can't take fresh fruits and stuff across the border. So every time you cross the border, you've gotta buy all the food and fresh fruits that you wanna eat and then you gotta eat them all or get rid of them before you go back over the border. I don't know why they don't like fruits crossing the border but they, there's a very good reason for it I'm sure but I think it's a little silly but that's why I'm not in charge all right let's go get our coffee I'm just gonna meander my way up a little closer looks like I'm gonna have to wash the windshield too <laughs> let's get ourselves on here I nosed in way in the back corner I was all by myself it was a nice quiet night this parking lot is ginormous and all the parking spots are just like extra huge which is awesome so we'll go uh we'll go to the pumps there so we can grab one of their squeegees get those bugs off the window in front of you so you can see where we're going <coughs> be a good day though. Yesterday was a beautiful day. I went through the back country in Nebraska. A little bit of a sea drought, a little bit of a change of scenery for me. It was beautiful. I, I found this travel plaza called Bosselman Travel Plaza on the I-80 uh, in Nebraska. It's like pretty much in the middle of Nebraska. I think it's at the corner of US 218 and the I-80. Massive, massive travel plaza. It's just a paradise for truckers and travelers of any sort. It's just amazing. Oh, 
here's my RV. My motorhome. The guy's just taking care of it for the next 35 years until I can afford it. This guy just parks right in the middle of the driveway. That's not really nice. Look at this Kenworth coming up on the right here, the orange one. Look at that. Oh, it's pretty old actually. <laughs> Still nice though. Custom sleeper on it. All right, here we go. We're just gonna roll ourselves into the pumps here just off to the left. It's like a big travel bus that came in the pumps the wrong way over there. RVs out here, I've noticed. Lots of them. I wish we were camping. Alright. Just coming into Belfort, South Dakota here. Taking a little bit of a shortcut across the back country. We're gonna sneak right through the, the northeastern corner of Wyoming and slip right into Montana. Remember what I was saying the other day about how I loved the South so much and how I felt at home there? Oh, come on, go, go, there you go, there you go. Good, good job. You know, I was saying how I love the South, I feel at home there, and I said that I would feel the same out here. I do. I love this place here too. South Dakota's awesome. Montana, Wyoming, all the Western states. Seems like wherever I go, I wanna move there. the grass isn't always greener I guess in other places but it's just so awesome seeing seeing the world out here beautiful place if you, ever, if you ever have a chance to visit the western United States it's so different from the other side of the Mississippi everything there is so condensed and people everywhere and out here in the west it's so wide open it's more like Canada where there's just huge distances between population centers in three kilometers, turn left on North Asda Road, US 212. So right now, I believe we're right, uh, we're pretty much south of Saskatchewan. And we're gonna make it close to the Canadian border today. We're gonna cross at Coots, Alberta, and Sweetgrass, Montana. So uh, I've been doing them, like I said, about 500 miles a day. Not full days, but uh, long enough. Slowly making our way there. And then tomorrow we'll have a short day. We'll only have like five hours of driving to do tomorrow. Something's going on here. Whole bunch of cops. Looks like there's an RV. Waving me through. Oh, there was an accident. Shoot. Wonder what he hit. There's more people down here. It looks like the ca the truck was pulling a, a fifth wheel camper. He hit something. I wonder if he hit. Uh, oh, there's a motorcycle here. No way. Oh no. Oh. Hope everyone was okay. Uh, kind of looks like the ambulances must have taken that motorcyclist or motorcycle guy to the hospital by now. That motorcycle is just mangled. How did that happen? It almost looked like the motorcycle got rear-ended by the pickup. I wonder if maybe like a deer or something, some wildlife jumped out on the road in front of the motorcycle and the motorcycle stopped for it and the pickup behind it maybe didn't see what that the bike had stopped. 
plowed into him. Hey, yikes. That's a mess. Oh man, I have a feeling someone got hurt there. It's hard to imagine no one getting hurt when there's a motorcycle involved, right? stopped here in Hardin, Montana. There is a casino on every street corner. Casinos out in Montana here are like Tim Hortons in Canada. There's just one everywhere you look. Get onto this. Here. We must be on uh, an Indian reservation or something. Everyone here seems to be in 500 meters of Indian take heritage to left on I 90 West. McDonald's was really slow, too. I just gave it away that I'm eating McDonald's. Shoot. Yeah, I went and ordered McDonald's. I'm a bad boy. What? It was really slow. It took them like 20 minutes. Oh well. Oh well. They had all kinds of pictures. Meters, take the entrance. Come on, Karen. On tell them tell the story West. here. They had all kinds of pictures of. Uh, uh, you know, big Indian chiefs in the McDonald's. It was pretty interesting. No pictures of Elizabeth Warren, though. Montana sunsets. You won't see this anywhere else. Other than in Montana. Beautiful country here. Montana sort of reminds me a lot of Alberta. Uh, it's right beneath Alberta. You know, there's no sales tax here and stuff. Just like in Alberta. I think Alberta still has no provincial sales tax, right? It used to be that way. You know, back in the day, Alberta, their budget was always, they always had a surplus in their government budget every year. And then they would give the surplus back to all of their residents. You'd get a check from the government at the end of the month and they'd pay you. They wouldn't keep the surplus, they would give it back to their people. It's amazing. And that's with all the transfer payments that the East is sucking out of Alberta. You know, we got this crazy wealth transfer system going on in Canada where, uh, you know, Alberta gets sucked dry and the federal government relocates all of the money that they make off their oil to the other country, the, I mean the other provinces that don't make as much, Manitoba being one of them, we, we do, I, I'm not really proud of that, but I don't, I don't think that's really fair, I don't think that's fair at all, 
I mean, Manitoba has tons of natural resources. It's just we can't go dig them out of the ground because we have roadblocks all over the place. But oh well. What's the word? I digress. Just enjoy the scenery. If you can see past the bugs. I did wash the windshield just last time I stopped. Any of you from Montana? I'm sure there's a couple of you from out here. I'm jealous. I would love to live here. But at the same time, I am not ready to give up our, our home. I like where I'm from too. You know, one day I've got to travel outside of Canada and the United States. We're hoping to go to Mexico sometime soon. But that's just going to be going to like, you know, an all-inclusive resort. That's not really like Mexico. That's sort of like Canada and America got a little piece out of Mexico and built a resort and we just go and hang out there with other Americans and Canadians. <laughs> it's not really Mexico. It's just in Mexico. I don't know. Like, Britt and I, we both have big dreams of going to Europe. We want to go see Europe one day. I don't want to go to Eastern Europe, Australia, and pretty much the English-speaking world. I wouldn't mind going to like Japan or South Korea. I'd really like to see how how their society works out there, especially Japan. You know, they have they, they have the city Tokyo. Did you know that that city has more residents than all of Canada in one city? I'd love to go see how they pack all those people together. Get this on you there. Oh, I need to hook you up here, buddy. Just in case. It's for your own safety. Hard to do this with one hand. Alright, let's get all the steps. All the steps. Or just three of them. Okay. So we made ourselves home tonight at this rest area. Not too sure what the town is, but this is where we're gonna sleep tonight. We're probably about an hour or so from Great Falls, Montana. We've got about 500 miles to do again tomorrow, and then the day after we unload first thing in the morning and then go in the afternoon and reload and head home. It's an excellent pole diesel, excellent choice. I would have picked that one too. No, actually, you know what? I think I would have taken that. I think I'm gonna take that one. I'm actually looking forward to seeing this whole area here once the sun comes up tomorrow. Looks like there's this big rock formation here. Doesn't look like the camera's quite picking it up. I'll have to show you in the morning. It looks awesome. It looks like a, almost like a, a cliff or something that you can just climb up, do some rock climbing. <laughs> All right, well, that's it for today, everybody. It's a beautiful night here in Montana. Perfect temperature. I'm going to sleep great. Thanks for joining me today. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. If you didn't like the video, if you hated it, hit the thumbs down button. It's okay too. I'll see you guys tomorrow.